Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Smith's Kitchen. Brian, Mr. Smith, Kitchen. And uh, today I thought we'd uh, make a cheesecake. We're going to do a uh, peanut butter chocolate cheesecake. Kind of like the peanut butter cups um, that you can buy. And uh, I think it's going to be a, not a hard one by any means, um, but definitely a fun one to make. And we're going to do something a little different today. Uh, this has a brownie crust and... Uh, Instead of doing the homemade brownie recipe that we made last week, um, I'm going to follow the uh, directions on the recipe, and we're going to use a box mix uh, for the brownie base, but it's got a nice brownie base, a fudgy brownie base. It's got a uh, layer of peanut butter cheesecake, and then it's topped with a lovely chocolate ganache, uh, some crunched up or uh, diced up uh, mini peanut butter cups. And uh, I haven't decided yet if we're going to add a uh, peanut butter uh, dollops to it or not yet. Um, still kind of thinking about that. We'll do it as we go along. Uh, but I'm really trying hard to follow the recipe this time and not deviate far from it. But we'll see how it goes. I, I know the picture of it that I saw looks amazing. Um, and like I said yesterday, uh, my friend Kevin found this recipe and uh, asked me to try it. I, Kevin's one of my dear friends, and we work together. He, uh, and he, him and his uh, better half, Kaylee, usually uh, request a fair amount of cakes and stuff like that. And they're always, not not always a little more challenging, but uh, definitely not run-of-the-mill cakes. So, um, that being said, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Uh, I'm glad you found me. hope you get something out of these videos. Um, or at least check out my videos, and uh, if you're returning, it means you're a glutton for punishment, but I love you all the same, as always. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, I think it's over here, it might be over here, but I'm pretty sure it's over here. Uh, right next to it's the notification bell, uh, just looks like a little bell, and that'll let you know when my videos come out. Uh, I try to do a couple videos a week, sometimes three, and uh, yeah, it's always food related. Uh, Wednesdays we try to cook. Thursdays we try to bake, um, sometimes we do some canning, uh, I got the garden going, which uh, we're going to take a look at this week, I promise, um, it'll be a quick separate video, and uh, yeah, so I mean that's all the stuff we do, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, you know, they, uh, they do a couple things for me, for us as a community, uh, one for me, one for all of us, and the thumbs up, thumbs down tells me you know, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, you know, um, you can leave a comment as to why if you didn't like it, or you can leave a comment if you did like it. Um, and it also helps put us in more people's uh, YouTube feeds and allows them to see the video, hopefully subscribe, and uh, become a, a member of our neighborhood. You know, kind of join the club, so to speak. So that being said, um, let me uh, get the camera moved. And we will uh, start making a cake. All right. I'll be back in one second. Okay. So, um, I, I don't know if, if you've been watching, following my channel for a minute. You know we're on the other side of the countertop. Um, I want to try something a little different, see how it worked out. Try to get you a better view. This view is a little harder to do when I'm cooking because you're sitting on my stove. But things you will need even to make uh, the brownie mix with. Well, maybe not the brownie mix with. But you will definitely need for this scale. Yeah, you know, always important. Scales are always important, especially when baking. Um, that's my oven that you hear going off in the background while well, that you're sitting on. Uh, you also need a bowl, um, so that way we can mix our brownie mix up with. And then you'll need a whisk or a hand mixer. I'm just going to use a whisk to put this brownie mix together. <clears throat> the other thing you will need is a 9-inch springform pan. 9-inch springform pan. And I went ahead and buttered the inside of this, which it'll tell you even on the brownie mix. Uh, if you're not using a dark nonstick pan to go ahead and butter it. So I did. And plus I wanted to butter it anyhow. But you'll need a 9 inch spring form pan. If you don't know what spring form is, it has a little mechanism right there. Allows you to take it apart. Alright, they're almost essential for cheesecakes. Um, or a lot of any cake for that matter, but especially cheesecakes. Not that you 
absolutely have to have one of these, but it does make it a lot easier to come out. And you want to get a good one so it doesn't leak. All right, so to start this off, we're just simply going to make the brownie mix. And we're going to get that together real quick. Uh, use your favorite brownie mix, for that matter, um, or what you have available. You, I suppose, could make your own. Well, I know you could make your own brownies. You could even use my recipe from last week. But I, for this first go around, I want to see how, you know, it tastes. Um, you know, with it made the way they say to make it. So we just get put our brownie mix in there. The, the problem I have with most mixes, they're handy. They're quick, especially if you, know, you got company coming over last minute and you're like, oh my. Um, to this, it's really only got three other ingredients. It's got a half a cup of oil. Um, I'm just using plain old vegetable oil. You want to use a non-flavored oil, so you want to stay away from uh, like uh, olive oil, grapeseed oil, things like that. I'm using a quarter cup of water. And then we're just going to put a couple eggs in here. I'm not the best egg cracker in the world, so to speak, but... And you want to make sure your eggs are at room temperature. Um, we preset our oven at 350 degrees, preheated it. And I got, this morning when I got up, I got all the stuff we need for this out that needs to be room temperature. My eggs. So in the morning, you're going to want to set out six eggs, three things of cream cheese, three eight ounce package of cream cheese, and a half a cup of uh, heavy cream. That way they'll be at room temperature. So anyhow, got all that in there. We're just going to mix this up real good. It's okay if you got lumps in it. You know, brownies prefer lumps. All right, we got her mixed up. Looking good. Now I am obligated to tell you so you don't potentially get sick that you should never eat any mixes that have raw eggs in them until after they're cooked. All egg products, including chicken, have salmonella. Um, that being said, I've never heard of anybody dying from eating uncooked brownie mix or cake mix, but all the same, why take that chance, I guess. All right, so we're going to pour this into our springform pan. Just like such. Now there isn't really a time for a nine inch round pan for brownies. Um, it does have a nine by nine square on the back of a brownie mix. Almost all brownie mixes, they give you options, you know, like a three by, uh, nine by 13 and eight by eight and nine by nine, things like that. Uh, go with the nine by nine inch square and it, but, and in my case, it's like 35 minutes. So if you want to test it to make sure it's done, you simply, you're going to take a toothpick and bring it in about an inch and a half or so from the edge and put it down in there. Cause in this case we're making fudgy brownies. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven. And when I come back, we'll talk about what to do next. All right. I'll see you here in just a second. Okay. So our brownies are done. We're going to get those out of the oven. And Ooh, that's hot. All right, we're gonna set the brownies on the cooling rack, just like such. We're gonna turn our oven down to 325 degrees, just like such. Shut the timer off this time. <coughs> hmm, excuse me. All right, why this is still hot? I'm gonna take a half a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and put those on the top, just like such. Yeah, I mean, you could use any kind of chocolate chips you want, but this calls for semi-sweet, half a cup, and it calls for a half a cup of peanut butter chocolate chips. Use whatever variety you have available, you like, whatever's your favorite. You yeah, know, this is where you can play a little, so to speak. All right, we'll get those bringed out. And your half a cup of chips is 85 grams each, both the semi-sweet chocolate chips and the peanut butter chocolate chips. All right, so I'm going to go set this on the kitchen table because I don't have any room in the kitchen and get it set with 
set up with the mix mixer and uh, we will start making the cheesecake part. Meanwhile, this is going to cool. And I know you're saying to yourself, Brian, that doesn't leave much room for cheesecake. That's okay. As this brownie cools, it's going to drop, you know, and what it's doing in the process is semi melting those chocolate chips down and holding them. This is like a layer in between. I'm telling you, this, this thing is going to be amazing, I think, when we're done with it. So let me get this moved, get the mixer out, and we'll start making our filling. Okay, got our mixer out. We are set to go. First thing I'm going to do is plug it in. Uh, as you may or may not know, I don't ever plug in my tools until the last minute. Uh, we got little hands with our youngest, Abby, who may come in here. She may fire it up, not thinking. And I I don't want to see her get hurt. I don't want to get hurt. And, you know, worst case scenario is I don't, or best case scenario is I don't want whatever's in my mixer flying everywhere. So I plug it in very last minute. Now we got that. I've got my three eight ounce blocks of cream cheese. And when you set your cream cheese out, much like your eggs to get to room temperature, um, I cover mine. Cause I, I have found in the past, you know, when I first started making cheesecakes, that if I didn't cover it, um, they would yellow a little. And I don't want them to yellow. It's just from sitting in the air. Um, Cause sometimes I'll take my, uh, my dairy stuff out the night before. So we're gonna put that in there like such. And then we're just going to beat this on medium speed with the paddle attachment. You can also use a hand mixer. You know, there's no rule that says you have to have a stand mixer to make cheesecakes. So we'll go ahead and get that locked in. And we're going to cream this uh, until they're both, it's all smooth, no lumps, you know, and no longer a block. All right. We are creamed. No longer a block, as you can see. Um, and this is the reason why you want to set your cream cheese up. If you don't it will inevitably uh, not cream well. You'll have little lumps and they don't, they're they very hard to get out. Um, unlike when you're creaming butter, you know, it can still be a little cold and um, it'll warm up as it goes. And it, cream cheese does the same thing as it's in here, but it doesn't warm up as quick as butter and you will have uh, lumps of cream cheese. So now I'm gonna scrape down my sides real quick. Get that all taken care of like such put my spatula down and now the next thing we want to add to this according to the recipe is the sugar and vanilla so we're going to add uh one cup i believe of sugar uh yep one cup 200 grams and it's just regular granulated sugar like you'd put in your cereal or your coffee and we're gonna add two tablespoons, I'm sorry, uh, one tablespoon of vanilla, which is 13 grams. All right, we're gonna put that in there. And we're gonna let this run for a couple minutes. Um, that way we can, but we're just gonna let it run on medium. All right, we, we don't want it to go, we don't wanna go much past medium. That way we don't incorporate a lot of air into this. Cheesecakes are supposed to be dense. So we're gonna go ahead and get that running if you have a stand mixer you're going to run it on four to six but no higher than six and we're going to let this go for a couple minutes all right there we go we let her mix for a couple minutes and we're just making sure that everything's blended well everything's smooth and creamy you really want that sugar to be incorporated into the cream cheese in a, in a nice even you know consistency but we're you know like i said though you don't want to mix it on super high speed because we're not looking to incorporate air all right so then we'll scrape the sides of our bowl scraping is important it makes extra sure that we uh, get everything mixed thoroughly because even uh hand mixers stand mixers they all uh have dead spots you know where they don't quite get everything mixed up sometimes so we'll get that on there Scrape off my paddle, or my spatula here. All right. Now the next ingredient is four large eggs, which is about 200 grams, um, roughly. I mean, it's, eggs are a natural product, so I mean, it might vary by a gram or two, but on average, a store-bought large egg is 50 grams. And we're gonna add these in 
uh, one at a time. All right, and we're gonna mix this on low speed while we do it. And what you're looking for, I'll show you, is we're gonna turn our mixer on low, we'll drop one egg in, and then we're gonna look for it to completely disappear. It's gonna break up. And that's the reason why you want your, this is one of the reasons why you want your eggs at room temperature, they break up easier that way. And then we'll go ahead and add our second egg, and we'll just keep on adding. All right, get our last egg in there. Let that get incorporated. Then we're on to the good stuff. All right, our battery is officially awesome. So while we got it on low, we're gonna go ahead and take a uh, three quarter cup or a, about 190 grams of peanut butter. While that bad boy is moving, we're just gonna put her in. Just like such. We don't have to turn it off. Now that's per the directions, actually. While it's running, is what she says. Alright, and then we're going to add a half a cup of heavy cream. Room temperature also. You're going to pour it in slow. You know, no need to, to rush it. And if you've got your mixture set too high, this will splash all over the place. Okay, got our milk in there. Now we're just going to let this incorporate. Yeah, you know, we're not going to, you know, it, we don't need to mix it crazy. We just want to make sure it's mixed together, which we're about there now. All right, so got that mixed up, looking good. Let's get our paddle attachment off of there. Like such. Good enough for government work, as I say. All right, we're going to take our bowl off, lock her down, unplug her real quick, set her back here to the side, and then we'll just give this a good mix. Make sure we got everything well incorporated. And then we got one left ingredient left to put in, and it'll be done. As far as the filling goes. Alright, the last thing we need to put in here, I, I left them in the fridge. I bought some uh, peanut butter cup minis and I took uh, 14 of them and quartered them. So each piece is a quarter of a mini <laughs> cup. Now, you, you don't have to do it this way. I, we'll talk about an alternative to that in a second. But you're just going to take those, put them in and then mix it into your batter. Just like that. You want to fold them in. If you put them in with your paddle attachment on your mixer, you'll uh, crush them. We don't want them crushed. We want them to be uh, quarter pieces still. All right. Well, let me go get the uh, brownie, and we'll uh, get that in there and then talk about what to do next. All right, back in one second. All right, we're back, and it's dropped a little bit. You know, I'm down with it. It has, we got about two thirds of the pan left, which is fine. And now we're gonna take our mix. Yeah, next time if I use a brownie mix, I may not go quite as tall on the brownie, but we're following the recipe this time. We're gonna go ahead and get our filling in there. Ooh, that looks delicious. Now, I did kind of do this backwards, and I'll show you what I did backwards here in a second. That's all right. I think it'll work out all the same. Actually, that filled in quite nicely. I think we'll have plenty of room for it. So those of you that have made cheesecakes before will know what I did, I think. That in there. Awesome. That actually all fit, which is awesome. Okay, so the one thing I didn't do that I should have beforehand not a big deal easy fix let me move this out of the way is we're going to water bath our cheesecake so we want to get foil around our spring form pan now 
if you've never made a cheesecake before, you're asking yourself, why would you want to put foil around a springform pan? Well, because we're going to water bath this. And when water bathing, if you don't put a barrier around the bottom of this pan, it will uh, inevitably start getting water into the uh, bottom of the pan and soak your brownie, which is bad. Um, it can lead for a undesirable end result by uh, making your brownie mushy. And that, you know, nobody likes a mushy brownie. That's just horrible. All right, let me get the other piece of foil on here, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do after that. Okay, we got our cheesecake foiled over, and we are good to go. Get that off the lip a little bit. Not that it's any big deal. I mean, if your cheesecake rises a little and it uh, gets into the foil, don't sweat it. The foil will easily pull right out. So remember, we're not professionals. We're just here to have a good time and have some fun with it. Yeah, you know, but you still want to do your best to, you know, make it look right. You know, that way you can go, yeah, I did that. I'm amazing. All right, so we got that done. We're going to take it. We're going to set it here in this roasting pan. All right, this is part of the water bath process. You will need a roasting pan. So we'll put that in there, and then we're going to take hot water all right now if you have a tea kettle and you can heat some water up or you want to put it in a pot and make your house humid awesome i just use the hottest water i can get out of the sink and we're gonna put about an inch worth of water in this all right mm -hmm. all right we got our inch worth of water on that and got that so now all we have to do is put this in the oven at our 325 degrees sorry like i said new camera angle still working out the kinks um we have to put this in the oven at 325 degrees and we're going to water bath bake this for an hour all right and then when i come back we will uh talk about the very next step because cooling this cake down so it doesn't crack is a three-step process um we don't want it to crack so i mean i can tell you what we're gonna do but then i'll show you um we're gonna cook this in, bake this in there for an hour with the water bath then we're gonna turn the oven off crack the oven door let it sit in there for about 30 minutes and then we'll take it out and put it on the cooling rack so when i come back we'll uh look at uh how far we should crack the oven door open and uh Talk about the next step. All right, see you here in a little bit. All right, so timer just went off, so we're going to go ahead and shut off the oven here. Sorry. There is that. Now, we're going to do what's called the jiggle test real quick, and we're just going to pop open the door right quick, and we're going to wiggle it, see how it doesn't really do anything but jiggle in the middle. That's perfect. Now, we're going to crack this door, sorry, open for about 30 minutes and all we have to do to do that I'm just gonna put a spoon in there so it's just slightly cracked and what that's gonna do is it'll let the heat escape slowly and it's gonna let that cool down from 325 degrees to uh, almost room temperature and then we can take it out of the oven all right I'll see you here in just one moment okay so we let this bad boy cool in the oven for 30 minutes and then I took it out Took it out of the water bath, undid the foil, let it sit on a cooling rack for probably the last hour and a half, two hours, but I, I needed to get it completely down to room temperature. But see, look, no more jiggle, right? That means we're not overbaked, we're baked just right. Because even at room temperature, there should be no jiggle to it really, so to speak. But if there is a little jiggle, that's okay. Once we put it in the fridge, that should go away, all right? And you should still be good. Just don't. You, the worst thing you can do to a cheesecake is bake it a little too long. So we did an hour in the oven at 325 in the water bath. We turned the oven off. We checked for jiggle. You know, and the center was jiggly a little bit, but not the outer edge. The outer edge was set. That's good. We let it sit in there with the 
door vent or the door cracked 30 minutes and then we let it sit out on the counter for on our cooling rack for about an hour and a half so now here comes the practice and patience we got to wrap this up all right now when you wrap a cheesecake the best practice in my mind at any rate is to put the the wrap down on top of the cheesecake tuck it in the reason for that is because of condensation even though it's room temperature on the outside that we're feeling all the way around the inside's still a little warmer right because nothing cools evenly um, that's just the way of the world so by putting this down on here instead of straight flat across if you did that and it's not say cool enough so to speak you'll get condensation on top of there and it'll all drip down onto your cheesecake and there's not really a good way to get it off without tearing up the top so now i mean if you notice no cracking we had no cracking i mean we're not done cooling yet but normally by this point if it's going to crack it has cracked and so we're in good shape so now what do we do with it now that we've covered it in saran wrap that's the real question here comes the true practice and patience so what we have to do now sorry for the lighting that's kind of weird looking um <laughs> i look heavenly uh which is some would probably say is far from the truth um now we have to put this in the fridge you can put it in there six five six hours to chill best practice is overnight now it took me a long time to determine what is overnight overnight is at least eight hours um think about how long you sleep so you put this you put this in the fridge you know you you're cooking it in the after, baking it in the afternoon get it to this point it's probably six seven o'clock in the evening uh you put it in the fridge it sits in there eight to ten hours so eight to ten hours overnight is best practice uh which is what we're going to do with this which means when you see me next i'll have different clothes on and the sun will be coming up um but you could probably get away with as few as six hours uh and a lot of that depends on your fridge how cold is it how quick do things chill stuff like that but at least overnight which is what we're going to do so when i come back it'll be the next day and we will uh, make the ganache for this the chocolate topping for it top it off and uh try a piece all right i'll see you here in just a second all right so it's the next day and we're going to uh get the cheesecake out of the pan i've got some uh heavy cream on the stove so that way i can make a ganache up real quick so let's get down to the counter and release the kraken um or the cheesecake as the case may be but i've decided we're just gonna put a ganache over the top of this and then uh some quartered up chopped up diced up uh uh peanut butter cup bites i gotta keep an eye on this uh heavy cream though when it starts to boil it's gonna go quick let me grab a, my offset spatula here that I forgot to grab. So when we take this out, we want to make sure we get, you know, our, uh, everything kind of, make sure everything's away from the pan, this the edge of the spring form, to give it a cleaner pull away from it. All right, that is that. Now we'll release it pop it off and take a look at what we got wow that actually turned out really really nice pan came out fairly clean there's a little bit of stuff on but that's to be expected and there is our beloved cheesecake all right well, i'm going to get this ganache made and get this onto an actual plate and uh when i come back we'll get the ganache on there and the uh cut up pieces of uh, peanut butter cup and give it a taste. All right, be right back. All right, guys, so it just hit me that some of you may have never made a ganache before. Ganache is not hard. It's actually the easiest kind of like chocolate topping that you can make, and it's so versatile. Ganache is just simply heavy cream heated, poured over chocolate chips, wafers, uh, chocolate bars, crushed up and, and crushed. Um, and then you let it set for a minute to start melting the chocolate. And then you literally start in the middle of the bowl 
and just swirl real slow after it's sat for a minute with a heavy, hot heavy cream over the chocolate and work your way out and you end up with a chocolate ganache. Just like that, it's a chocolate sauce. And I apologize if you didn't know how to make that, I should have shown you. Now, that being said, things you could do with this, you can let it sit right here and for to get to room temperature and it'll firm back up. And then you just whip it real good. You can put it in the freezer it'll become, or the refrigerator and it'll become very hard. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just a, uh, and you can put it, well, you can put it in the fridge and let it get hard enough that if you whip it, it'll turn into a frosting, um, which is amazing. Ganache is a very versatile chocolate topping. Um, that being said, this one here was simply a half a cup or a hundred and twenty five four grams if i'm wrong i'll put it right here somewhere right here somewhere um i'm pretty sure it's 124 grams but uh it's a half a cup of chocolate chips semi-sweet chocolate chips and two cups of or i'm sorry one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and a half a cup of cream which then i heated and when you heat it you're you're going to look for it to start to boil so right or bubble so around the edges of the pan it'll start to you'll see st bubbles starting to come up when it gets to that point you want to take it off if you don't because it's hot enough if you don't it will boil over um, and then you'll have heavy cream boiled heavy cream all over the place the other thing we're going to need to top this with is some uh cut up diced up smashed up uh peanut butter uh chocolate peanut butter cups. Uh, now, <clears throat> might I recommend to you, if you buy these from the store, which I did, I just bought a bag of them. It, it's about 34 of them, which sounds like a ton, but as you can see, it's not really a ton. Um, and it, it, it's about 110 grams. Yeah, 110 grams. So you put them in the fridge for about 10 minutes and then cut them up. They're firm enough to cut, but not so firm that they'll break. So, we got those two things there. What we want to do is take our ganache. It's cooled for a minute, so it's not blazing hot anymore. And it's nice and smooth. You can make this in the microwave, although I don't really recommend it. Um, I, the one time I tried it to see if it would work, it was a colossal failure. So we're just going to pour a little bit of this on the top here. We'll give it a good spread. A little more on there now you're gonna have some leftover and that's fine leftover isn't a bad thing and you can store it it'll store in your fridge for about a, about a month um, and if you find that uh, you want to use it as a sauce because uh, we, we've used it as a sauce plenty of times um, when I made the turtle cheesecake a while back and I had chocolate ganache I just put it in a bottle and then to uh, to warm it back up so that way you could add more if you wanted to because I took it to uh was essentially my test kitchen um or work they uh you know some of them wanted more of it on there some of them didn't so bottle let it sit out to get to room temperature and it'll pour or squeeze out just fine yeah you don't have to worry about that at all but what I'm trying to do here is Get it to the edge, let it drizzle over just a little bit, but maybe not a lot. Now, some ideas that I was thinking of as I was making this would be something as simple as a... Uh, now, and this will harden because this cheesecake is ice cold. Uh, when you... Remember how we put the peanut butter and chocolate chips in between as the layers? Uh, one of the suggestions was putting peanut butter, uh, actual full-size peanut butter cups there instead, which I think would be pretty awesome. And then uh, another another thought on this would be instead of, you know, we could put whole cups on here or cut uh, full-size peanut butter cups in half, do a uh, cream cheese icing, uh, peanut butter flavored, and do dollops around and put full size uh halves in each dot in the dollops going around with some uh other crushed ones in the minis in the middle 
you know, the possibilities are really just endless with uh, toppings for this, I think. But like I said, this go around, I just simply want to use the recipe given so that way I can see, you know, how does it taste? How does the peanut butter taste? Um, of course, yours is going to depend on what kind of peanut butter you use also. Yeah, that is a, uh, a must. All right, I think we got enough chocolate on there to satisfy the masses. And it's okay to let it, I mean, you don't have to let it drip over, but I did. Yeah, why not? So we got that on there. Looking good. Then we'll take some of our uh, topping, our cut up chocolate peanut butter cups. Put them on the top here. Yeah, so you guys, like right now, I could go ahead and make up some cream cheese, uh, peanut butter cream cheese icing and dollop it around and still not miss a beat, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, only because I really, I like the simplicity of this the way it is. Yeah, it looks very pretty. It looks very good. All right. Let me, and I will say this was the easiest thing to get off the bottom of that spring form pan with that being a brownie. But there my friends, is our end result. I think it looks really, really good. You know, I don't know what you think, but that's what I think. So give me a second to get a plate and a knife, and when I come back, we'll uh, turn it around. All right, be right back. All right, guys, went and got my plate, knife, uh, took a couple pictures real quick so we could uh, post it to our Facebook group. If you didn't know, we have a Facebook group. It's Mr. Smith's Kitchen. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. You can follow me there. Um, I've got a, a small business page set up on Facebook. If you want to order a cake or pie and you're in the Ohio area, I'll be more than happy to make one for you. I Unfortunately, the way I'm set up at the moment, can't do anything out of state, but I can do uh, stuff here in Ohio. Get that cut. So where it's still cold, the brownie is still really stiff. I mean, you want to keep this refrigerated. That's that's a for sure deal there. But, you know, now I have found with cheesecakes, the proper way to serve a cheesecake is if it, like if you have a party, you're doing a party or something like that, you want to let it set out for a few minutes first. You don't want to pull it straight from the fridge. Sorry, that's my coffee maker going off. Uh, you don't want to pull it straight from the fridge and serve it. Um, the crust is usually really hard to cut, I, and I found that to be true with every crust I've made, every cheesecake I've made. But if you let them sit for, you know, three, five minutes, the um, everything softens up enough to cut it. You know, and that's, you know, that's what you want. That way you got a good, clean execution. All right, so let's pop this out of here and see what we look like. Maybe. I can get it to come out. Oh, almost in one whole piece. That first piece, it never fails. Pies, cakes, whatever. It is always elusive to me. And I'm not sure why that is. That, well, I can see why it is. I didn't cut it all the way through. That's all right. That's all right. There we go. Clean it up for the next go round. That ah, got chocolate all over me. But there is our cheesecake. At any rate, like I said, I I never get seem to get that quite right on that first piece. If you watch my past videos, you would see that. All right, but there we are. I mean, it's it's firm. It held together. Now all we need to do is give it a try and uh, see how uh, how it all comes together. I mean, I can tell you just on the overall, with it getting on my fingers as I've made it, that the cream cheese part tastes good. I can tell you the brownie tastes like a brownie. 
I can tell you the ganache tastes like a ganache. But what does it all taste like together? I'm curious because there's nothing milk chocolatey really in here but the, uh, cho uh, the chocolate peanut butter. Ch uh, yeah, <laughs> the cups, the chocolate cups. <laughs> Kevin, my friend, you picked a good one. This is off the hook. Hands down. It screams unhealthy and delicious all at the same time. Holy cow. This was not a hard cheesecake to make by any means. You didn't even have to fuss with the crust if you use the box mix. Yeah, and like I said, it would deflate. So you actually ended up with more cheesecake. Remember, yeah, you know, a few minutes back when we uh, pulled that out of the oven, it was really tall in the pan. And I knew it would deflate. Um, that I had no worries of. But that is just off the hook. Um, and you know, with the ganache, you don't have to let it drizzle down the side. You could pour ganache over the whole thing. You could just put it on the top, however you like it. But oh my gosh, try this recipe. That is incredible. Hands down. Mm. Mm. Sorry. I right, got a mouthful of just goodness. So. Next week, um, I don't know what we're going to do for dinner yet, but I'm sure it'll be something amazing and definitely something new. Um, so who, who, it's hard to say. I am going to try to get a video out this weekend of the garden, but it's been raining the last few days and uh, I don't want to get my phone wet. I'm lazy. Sorry. But if it stops raining for a minute, I'm going to go out there and do some filming. Uh, but for Thursday's dessert, we're going to do a, a, a chocolate cake or a chocolate pie. It's a diner style pudding pie that um, <clears throat> I think you will thoroughly enjoy. It, it is a little, I don't want to say time consuming, but yeah, it's a little more complex than most pies, but it's well worth it um, in the end. I've actually made uh, two now. And I think they're fantastic, and I and I really want to share it with you. I look forward to sharing it with you, as a matter of fact. And I know it'll be something you'll like. So anyhow, till next week when we do dinner and dessert, I love you. I love you very much. I mean that. I really do mean that. Tell somebody else you love them, and you love them very much. Make them one of these cheesecakes. Oh my God, you will make a friend for life. I guarantee it. Let me know what you think if you do try it. Good or bad. All right, I'll see you next week. I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.